So no sniping for you today there, Bradley. Man, killing gel ball users with a manual springer really makes you thirsty. If only I had some water with me. What's up nerfers? Today I'm taking a look at this tiny little primary class manual springer called the KM9 Unicorn. Designed by a company whose name might sound familiar to some of you, XYL are the same people who made the highly successful gel blaster ARP9. This Nerf Blaster was forwarded onto me direct from them thanks to Blaster Tech who will be stocking these in Australia. I'll also put a link to a USA seller down below, so have a look at both of those retailers in the pinned comment. The build quality of the KM9 lives up to the Gel Blaster that came before it. So it has nice, thick, solid nylon with absolutely no play at all. Aside from the stock, which they always seem to have a small amount of movement to them. This blaster forgoes a clamshell design entirely, opting instead for a beefy takedown system that would put the Jet Blaster seated to shame. And these thick, quick access pins allow quick access to the spring so you can change out the power level on the fly. The pins also have a ball detent on the ends to prevent them from falling out. They're also really tight to get in, so they're not going anywhere. Now the best way I came up with to describe this blaster in one sentence is it's basically a half size worker harrier for when you don't need your velocity to exceed 200 feet per second. It also costs half the price at 163 Australian dollars or 95 US dollars. There are three different springs available for it and with the included weakest one I found that it averaged 150 feet per second. With an optional 1.7 spring I got 177 and with the strongest 1.8 upgrade spring that you can buy, I got an average of 188 feet per second. Honestly, that's pretty impressive for the size of this thing. And that short size makes it ideal for close quarters, whether that's at an indoor venue or an outdoor field like I'm using it at today. In the box, you get a knockoff 15 dark capacity worker talon mag, but it can also take real, actual worker talons. And with the blaster loaded, just cock and fire manually for each shot. You know the drill. But what you might not know is that if you hold the trigger down and then cock the blaster forwards, when the shotgun grip reaches the forward position, it can slam fire. This allows you to spam a lot of darts in quick succession. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of slam fire due to the obvious trade-off in accuracy, but some people do like it. It does mean you can't de-prime the blaster without firing it though, which is a little bit of a con for those of us who don't use slam fire. Now, the Unicorn, much like a lot of good blasters lately, such as the Harrier, it has a return spring on the barrel for the shotgun grip. The main benefit of that is it holds the breech closed when you point the blaster up in the air. But it should also help improve the air seal when you fire it. When it's time to change mag, the KM9 has a very gel blaster-esque style of mag release located on the right hand side of the blaster. In fact, it's quite like an AR-15. Just push that in to drop the empty mag and then load in a fresh one to continue firing. The mag release is also spring loaded which helps push the mag free of the mag well for those tactical gravity drops. Above the trigger, there's a safety lever where a selector switch would normally be on an M4 or AF. 15. Click it down for safe or up for fire. Now obviously the safety and mag release locations make this more for right handed users. So sorry lefties, there's no ambi here. A pretty cool feature of the KM9 though is that it gives you different priming options. Up until now I've been showing you the included shotgun grip which is angled forward slightly so that you don't hit your hand on the mag well priming it. But also included in the box is an orange Picatinny top rail that attaches to the internal metal priming bar and allows you to add an included grip giving you top prime like an old nerf retaliator. Is it elitist to say top prime sucks? I'm sure that would upset someone in the comments section down below, so it's a good thing I didn't say that. You could also choose to add a sight on here instead as a clever prank to pull on your friends. Made even funnier if they're a flywheel user. Myself, I prefer the shotgun grip, so instead I'd attach the black top rail, which is a fixed in place Picatinny, for when you want to actually use a sight. 
Something of note here is that the rear screw provided is a little too long and will actually dent your plunger tube if you screw it in all the way. So my suggestion would be to file a couple of threads off of the rear screw before using it. Also, if you don't want to use a sight of your own, the Unicorn does have rather basic non-adjustable iron sights molded as part of the shell. Now, earlier at the start of the video, I showed you how simple it is to access the spring. But now let me show you how much of a hassle it is to change the barrel. The stock barrel is only 160 millimeters long, and I found that the upgraded 250 mil barrel that XYL sells separately actually improved FPS with worker bamboo darts on all three springs. Rings, the stock one included. So to change the barrel, first of all with the upper separated from the lower, you need to remove the shotgun grip plus the Picatinny rail that it attaches onto. Then remove a total of four screws, two from each side of the blaster's handguard, and from here the front iron sight should come off and now the entire barrel through to the dart gate and pusher should come freely out of the front of the handguard. Now just remove three screws on the muzzle piece and you should be able to slide the barrel and dart gate off for your barrel change. Kind of a strange decision is that the barrel's actually glued into the dart gate. So when you buy the upgraded barrel from XYL, it also comes glued into a dart gate of its own. So now just do everything in reverse, put the return spring on the new barrel and do up all the screws again. Needing a dart gate for each barrel and not easily being able to use a barrel of your own seems a bit of a waste wasteful oversight by XYL. If it's anything like a gel blaster barrel though, you could probably soak it in hot water to soften the glue and remove it. However, XYL are currently working on a CNC metal internals kit for this, and that upgrade kit is going to add threaded barrels instead, and that'll allow barrel swaps without opening up the blaster at all. This would have been nice to have out of the box, but maybe we'll see that on a plastic version too. Speaking of metal parts, having a look inside the lower receiver, you can see the Unicorn has a fully metal trigger and catch system, which looks completely different to any other Nerf blaster I've ever seen before. Also, you might have missed it, but all these orange parts like the trigger, mag release and safety switch, those are all metal too, even if they don't look like it on camera. The trigger itself isn't quite as nice as the Harrier. First, it has some slack to take up, then the trigger keeps going back for about the same distance again before the shot actually fires. You can definitely feel where the catch is going to release though. The grip of the blaster should be compatible with any standard Airsoft or Gel Blaster M4 AEG motor grip, which would make sense given XYL's heritage. The included grip is comfortable to hold though, so the only reason I'd want to swap it out is for style points. An oddity they've included in the box though is a soft drink bottle adapter that attaches to the grip. I guess removing the adjustable metal bar PDW stock, you could shoulder a Coke bottle like a much flimsier version of a paintball tank. Or you could just use it with the PDW stock for refreshments when out on the field. This adapter also allows those cheap flimsy N-Strike Nerf brand stocks, but I don't actually own any of those that I can show you. With a bottle attached, this might be a cool training blaster for a paintball player to use around the house or something. But for everyone else, I'd just stick with the included PDW style stock. That stock uses metal bars with slots inside, making it adjustable. You can have it fully out or halfway out, which I actually prefer. When fully collapsed, it doesn't lock closed, perhaps so that you can quickly pull the stock out when you need it, secret service style. <laughs> or maybe that's just an oversight. You could file a notch into it to add that functionality though, just so that it locks closed when it's fully collapsed. One last thing to mention, Earlier models of the Unicorn came with a ported cylinder with about a 50% capacity. These are garbage and XYL knows it. So all Unicorns sold outside of China will instead come with a full cylinder, which gives you more power and has the added benefit of not damaging your plunger o-ring. That pretty much covers my overview of the KM9 Unicorn though, so now let's get to some testing. Before I get started with the chrono test, I need to mention that this blaster doesn't seem to like anything other than bamboo style darts. With other types of darts, every second shot or so would go half the distance of the others. I think it's due to the small plunger volume of this blaster compared to something more powerful like a worker harrier. It also did it with all three springs, even the most powerful 1.8. Up on the screen now are my numbers for the shorter stock 160mm barrels, so if you want to see those, pause the video to have a look. But for my chrono testing, I'm using the upgraded 250mm barrel since it did boost my feet per second with all three springs, starting out with the stock 1.6 spring. 158, 150, 
142, 126, 153, 142, 153, 152, duplicate 152, 151, 149, 151, 154, 146, 157, highest one so far I believe. That's all 15 shots. With the stock 1.6 spring and 250mm upgraded barrel, I got a high of 158, low of 126, average of 149, and a standard deviation of 7.8. That average of 149 puts the stock spring right in that range of super stock 150 FPS cap wars. And if you want lower, like 130, I'm sure you could probably find a scar barrel that adds enough friction to reduce it down. So now, let's see the medium strength 1.7 spring. 183 and there's much more of a twang to that. 176. 164. 168. 163. 179. Listen to that twang. 178. 179. 176. 178, 183, 182, 184, 180, 186, I think that's the highest one with this spring, that's all 15 shots. With the medium strength 1.7 spring, I got a high of 186, low of 163, average of 177, and a standard deviation of 7. If your group plays with a 180 feet per second cap, like I know some of them do, this could be the spring for you. But now for the strongest spring available for it, so 1.8 spring. 192. 182. 168, 175, 181, 190, duplicate 190, 196, 194, 181, 195, 196, can we break 200? 194, 198, so close. 196, nah, cannot get over 200, which is probably good for some of you who play with a 200 FPS cap. With the strongest spring, the XYL cell, I got a high of 198, low of 168, average of 188. <laughs> That's a lot of eights. And a standard deviation of nine. The 1.8 spring has improved average velocity to 188 feet per second, up from 177. That high of 198 puts it just below the 200 FPS cap common in the USA competitive scene. The consistency of this blaster, or lack of it, with all three springs, was nothing to write home about though. But let's see how that translates to accuracy. Because the XYL Unicorn doesn't come with a scar barrel, First I'll show you how the stock accuracy would be, then I'll fit a Foamwork Adelaide bearing scar to the 16mm outer diameter barrel, which will add spin to the darts and should improve accuracy. Sticking with the stronger spring, because I think that's what probably most of you want to see, I'm shooting from a distance of 30 meters away at a 1 meter diameter target. Here it is with no rifling. So here goes. Little low, way off to the right. Was that actually a hit? It might have been on the cinder block. Way off to the right. I think we just missed to the right over the top of the target. Left and low. 
left and low. Left and low. High and right. I'm not even going to empty this whole mag, don't want to waste the darts, but let's chuck the scar barrel on and see how it goes. With no rifling attached, the unicorn shot a horrendous two meter spread. I couldn't even finish the mag having to watch that, so now for some shots with the Foamwork Adelaide bearing rifling attached. I'm not sure if that was a hit or not. That was. Hits. 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 Pretty straight for the such a low FPS. Hits. Hits. I think that just fell short on the left. Hits. 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 That's all 15 shots, and of course, being a lower FPS and a windy day, it does have longer to be affected by the wind as it travels through the air. But I, I was quite impressed with the accuracy of this 190 FPS blaster. With the scar barrel attached, that is. With rifling colored in red for those dots, the unicorn shot a spread 90 centimeters vertical and 30 centimeters horizontal. Way better than the blue shots without rifling. And while you could assume the vertical spread of this is due to the inconsistency of the blaster that we saw in the chrono test, 30 meters is also getting near the maximum effective range of 190 FPS blasters. I find that most nerf blasters shooting in this low in velocity tend to have a larger vertical spread like the one seen here. For example, here's a grouping with Tiger Foam's old Exus 2 where I had an 8 kilogram spring installed. Shooting similar numbers, it looks pretty similar in grouping as well as the XYL Unicorn, even if it is from 4 years ago. But after actually using the Unicorn in some gameplay, what do I think of it overall? For its size, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a pump action springer similar in power with as high quality construction as this, especially for 95 US dollars. If you only play 130 FPS, 150 FPS, or 200 FPS games, this blaster fits into those categories nicely depending on which spring you install and whether you add a scar barrel. And if you want the versatility to be able to swap between those different power levels in under 30 seconds, the quick pin takedown has you covered there. This blaster only really lacking bamboo darts is a bit of a downside though, and you'll either need to buy the jig to make them yourself or pay slightly more per dart to cover the cost of someone in a Chinese factory sitting there making them by hand for you. You could use the shorter stock barrel with standard nerf darts if you don't mind lower velocity numbers. You will still get some squib darts that only go half the distance though. So personally, I'd just use worker bamboos with the longer barrel. For my own kind of games here, the small plunger volume is a bit limiting and I can't see it getting anywhere close to the 300 FPS cap that I play at and that's no matter what aftermarket spring you throw in here or if even stronger ones exist. What I can say though is it was definitely fun to use the unicorn regardless. I just had to lower my expectations of range and stick to close quarters only. And in that role, the shorter length of the blaster made it excel compared to anything else I own. It was far superior for maneuvering around obstacles and there's a few sneaky kills that I made that I just wouldn't have been able to get with a longer blaster. The trade off there is I couldn't go up in the tower and take people out from long range like I normally do. 
So I think if you're choosing the Unicorn, you either compromise and play the CQB areas only, or if you're only playing with 130, 150 or 200 FPS cap to begin with, you're actually getting a no compromises, great close quarters blaster that can shoot just as far as all of your competition can. A shorter alternative to the Harrier with similar build quality. Just make sure you use bamboo darts. But what do you guys think? Do you like the compact size of the Unicorn? Is the bamboo dart requirement a turn off? Do you play with the velocity limits where this would shine or is 200 FPS a bit low for you? Let me know in the comments down below and consider leaving a like or dislike to let me know what you thought of the video. Here's two other ones you might enjoy and as always, thank you very much for watching. See ya.